of, we know these facts now, but in that time, so 1400 years ago, it, yeah. there was no way to find out these things because they yeah. didn't have that technological... Thanks ever so much for inviting me. Um, I'm Kat Smith and I've been the MP for Lancaster since 2015 and obviously we're about to have an election. Um, but um, it's been really interesting to come along today and learn so much more about Islam. Um, I knew a little bit before but I've been able to ask lots of questions and thank you for answering them. I really appreciate Kat for coming down here and giving you time and I hope you you would have a good experience after going out from here about and some some good impression about the Muslims in Lancaster and uh, and about Islam especially mm -hmm. and uh, I'm really thankful thank you once again for coming down thank you and I'd encourage everyone in Lancaster to come down and ask all those questions that they were too embarrassed to ask or weren't sure who to ask because it's a really good opportunity and I know that um, the volunteers that are here today are happy and they want people to come and ask questions just I carry on with the interview. Um, just wondering, you've got a you've got a scarf on. Have you like mm -hmm. put that on especially for? The oh well. No, no. Um, so, so obviously, one of your stands here um, is an opportunity for women to to wear the scarf. And so, I've had uh, one of your volunteers put the scarf on me so that I can experience what it's like. And um, I've discovered that apparently it's very convenient, especially if you're talking on your mobile phone, because you can slide it between the scarf and the head. And I thought that seemed like a much easier way of doing hands-free. <laughs> I, I must tell you, it's, you're looking more graceful, really graceful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very graceful. That's <laughs> it, um, basically. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much for that. I appreciate it. Thank I'm sorry to interrupt again, uh, your mic back, but I was is there any possibility that I could record your conversation uh, um, with a you young lady? Me. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's fine, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'd love it if you... Yeah, in, it'd be in fantastic a fantastic to get that on the... Oh, okay. Yeah. To no problem. No and then problem. if you can ask uh, the young lady about you know, what she thought of yeah, yeah, no problem. experience. No problem. It'd be great if I could get that. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for young lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's a while since anyone said that to me. <laughs> so, now there's only one copy, one version, shall I say, of the Quran. So, you know, in other faiths and you get like different versions and different types yeah. now, one unique thing about islam um, is that the holy book the quran it, there's only one type one so it's not copy is it, it was revealed 1400 years ago over 1400 years ago but there's only one type so not even a dot has changed mm -hmm. not even a word has changed it just stayed the same and that's something that is unique yeah. even if a person normally normally writes a book for example an author um, so now it's 2019 his thoughts will change you know during the year when he reads other things when he comes across other people and when it comes 2020 you'll think oh I need to add this I need to delete this so there'll be a new edition um, but when it came to the Quran it's never changed and uh, God actually mentions in the Quran in chapter 15 if I'm correct verse 9 let me just look and I'll show you oh no this is different so this is the actual Arabic text and this is um, a translation I believe in Hindi so let's look for an English one this is an English one but it's packed up it's actually for guests to take which we'll give you one so I'm looking for one all right they don't have an English one so we'll just have to open this. Um, so in that, the verse that I was mentioning, God mentions that um, I will preserve the Quran. I will preserve it. And uh, we have revealed it. We have revealed the book. Meaning what the verse book. is it and chapter? Chapter 15, yeah. verse 9. Chapter 15, yeah. verse 
Is it's it's alright, I've opened it now. Is that the one? No, no. That's not chapter 50, this thing. Chapter 15. Yeah. So this is it. So this is chapter 15, yeah. Surah 15, yeah. and verse 9. Indeed, it is we who sent down the message, i.e., the Quran, and indeed we will be its guardian. Right. So we will yeah. be preserving it. Yeah. Um, so, like other religions, their texts have changed yeah. significantly. And a lot. So that's why, for example, if you see the Bible, yes. you'll and see loads of so many versions, yeah. yeah. Uh, but whereas the Quran, um, and this is because God, He took this responsibility upon Himself. He's saying that we will preserve it. When you say we, you know how if you have like the Queen's language or the Queen's English, when she says things or yes. mentions statements, it's like we, we. Yeah. It's just like uh, because of her status. Yeah. So God in the Quran, he'll mention verses where he'll say we will do this, we will, meaning, you know, himself. Yeah. Um, so he said we will preserve it. And until now, it's been over 1400 years. His and promise has, true. yeah, his, yeah. His, his promise has been true. That's and so yeah, isn't it? and on top of that, to make it more kind of astounding, people actually memorize the entire book. So I've uh, memorized the entire you Quran. Can. No, I have. Oh, right. I've memorized it. Yeah. Um, so from cover to cover, word to word, I've, I've, I've memorized it. That's and amazing. So if someone asked you a specific chapter, um, and a verse from that chapter, you would know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a However, we actually memorized the Arabic. That's the significance because it's actually it was revealed in Arabic. This was just a, this is an English translation. Yeah. Um, so now you get it's been translated in many languages. So now the essence of the translation and the essence of the message will be the same. However, obviously you get different people translating. So you know in each language you've got variant words different and words, yes. so people will obviously translate it in their way. So you might find differences in translations yes. in certain words, but the, but the actual essence of the translations would yeah. be the same. Yeah. Um, but you will get a few words, you know, someone may have translated like this. And but that's, that's, a hum that's because of it's human input at the end of the day, the translation. Yeah. But the actual Arabic is directly from God, revealed to our last messenger, Prophet Muhammad. Um, so obviously that's not going to change ever. Well, that's our belief and it's proven to be true until now. And are there any that you've seen that the translations where you felt that it's moved from the um, essence or are they all pretty, pretty Personally, I found most all of them to be in essence same. Yeah. However, some in certain words and certain things, they've translated it a bit loosely or in a way that I may disagree. Yeah. Um, but it's not been on a very kind of extreme level where it's just totally different. Yeah. It's something close by, but I may not agree with it. I'm, I'm thinking, no, I think this translation suits this word. And you know, the Arabic language is actually a very rich language. So for one word, there's so many meanings. So for example, if you look at the word snake, a spotty snake would be called a certain you know, name and it would have a separate name. A snake with zigzags would have a separate name. And it's, it won't be like zigzag snake or spotty snake. Yeah. You don't add it like a, a specific word. It would be a specific snake. word, yeah. yeah. This is just an example. Um, and there's, yeah, that makes sense. There's so many words like that and it's, it's just mind-blowing when you look into yeah, it, you it think, is. wow. Yeah. So it's, I've actually forgot some of my statistics and research, but they did some research into languages and they actually found that Arabic was one, basically the richest languages. And on top of that, it's the easiest as well yeah. to learn and to pick up if obviously you put your mind and focus to it. Yeah. Um, someone was actually telling me and showed me all this. Uh, one of the oldest languages, or um, to know. be honest, I'm not sure. No. I'm not sure about yeah. it being the oldest, um, but it is. It's, it's now you know, the memorization of the Quran. It's not just me. Young children from the ages of five, six, seven, they start memorizing it. Yeah. Um, you know, as a Muslim, we don't have to memorize the entire book. However, we have to memorize some verses. Because you know, when we pray five times a day, we have to pray five times a day. We have to recite verses from the Quran. Right, specific ones. Um, so there's the opening chapter of the Quran, yeah. 
it's known as the opening, Surah Fatiha. So that one we have to recite. Yeah. Um, but then after you've recited that, then you can recite any any verses. Yeah. Yeah. The so it kind of leads into the other ones. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the opening Surah Al Fatiha. Um, because it's short, we'll just go over it. It's, it starts in the name of Allah. Allah means God yeah. in Arabic. The entirely merciful, the especially merciful. So now, for example, this, right, I would have translated as the most merciful, or first I would say the most com most compassionate, most merciful. Right, So yes. do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? When, but you know, they both make sense. It makes right? sense, yeah. like the essence yeah. is the same. Um, all praise right. is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, sovereign of the day of recompense, it is you we worship, meaning we are saying to God, it is you we worship and you we ask for help. Yeah. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. Yeah. So this is just the opening that we have to recite in when we're praying. Yeah. And then after that we can recite anything. Yeah. So Surah Fatiha, so that's every kind of Muslim like would have memorized. It's a prayer, I suppose. So it's a prayer. Yeah. yeah, it's a prayer. It's actually yeah. a prayer. This. Um, so it's a really nice starting prayer actually yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's very nice the more you reflect because god talks about um, you know guidance guide us to the straight path and you basically reciting that every day five times a day and in each prayer we've got like different units so more than five times really yeah. um, and basically god's trying to instill into us that you know a human can easily slip up in life it's kind of like realignments throughout the day isn't yeah it? yeah so you need yeah. guidance so you're saying oh god you know guide me yeah uh, so basically you're trying to stay focused and you're asking god just guide me and you need to know that you need to be guided as a human yeah. um, no matter your age no matter your status no matter you know your profession you always need some form of guidance that's why if you look at different professions they'll always give you like training and yeah. um, so yeah. basically you're reminding yourself that you need guidance from god so read the book um, Continue, take continuous guidance, consult the scholars and you know the knowledgeable folk and yeah. Can I ask you to actually recite? Yeah, yeah. That'd be really nice to get it on there as well. Okay. All right, no problem. Okay, do you want to hear some recitation in yes, in Arabic? Yeah. Okay. Over here. Yeah. All right, no problem. It's fine. It's anytime, you know, as loud as you can. You put me on the spot. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahmanir rahim Maliki yawm al-deen إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. So that was the, the, the opening, yeah. Yeah. That's what we were just yeah. talking about. Is there a significance with the how you say that, how you sing that? You meaning the, the tune? Yeah. And yeah. So normally if I was to recite even in English, then you just recite like a storybook. So I'm, I'm reciting this. So it says, they shall come to you guidance from me. And, and likewise in Arabic. So if I was to recite what I just recited in Arabic, I would say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar rahman ar rahim yeah. But we have been encouraged by the Prophet Muhammad, you know, our last messenger, peace be upon him, and in prophetic narrations to recite in tune. Yeah. And this, when you recite in tune, basically it spiritually uplifts you. It, and it is very, yeah, it yeah. Is very nice to listen to. Yeah. yeah. So the Prophet encouraged when we recite the Quran, we recite with tune. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's, it's more befitting to recite the Quran in tune. So li likewise, if you look in other faiths like Christianity, when they recite you know, the hymns and, and, and the yes. different chants, yeah. they recite it in tune and even in the Jewish faith. Um, so it's, it's just basically yeah. that. That's basically yeah. 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 And when you recite it in tune, it makes you want to recite more. Yeah. I was actually, last week I was in a school um, talking about Islam in front of some young children. They were only year three and year four, year five. And 
I just recited some verses because I had to talk about the Quran, that was the topic. And I said, okay, I'll recite some verses. And they were like, oh, can you recite more? Can you recite more? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's very captivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like soothing. And you know, when you're in, in a state of like sadness and you just want to listen to something, yeah. when you recite the Quran, um, or even if you just listen to it, then it makes you feel like relaxed and yeah. calm. And, Does you it know? make you feel reconnected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And especially if you understand it, yeah. and you recite those verses where you know God gives us hope and tells us about staying uh, connected to Him and trusting in Him and you know peace and these type of things, then it makes you feel really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was really nice. Thank you. It was good. That was yeah, good. It was nice. Can I just again uh, the mayor's there? Can I just borrow the mic and then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Just get a quick interview with the mayor. And maybe, can we have an interview later? Over there? Yeah, yeah, no problem. When, just just what you thought about everything, you know, about today. Would that be alright? Would, would that be okay with you? Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt again. Hi, yeah. are you okay? Yeah, no, I just wanted to. Would it be okay if we uh, took a little sort of an interview of, of what you think of the event and what are your thoughts? That's about? more than fine. Is, with is that, that okay? Yeah. Would you mind if we yeah. give give him a yeah. five ten minutes yeah. to assimilate yeah. and, and then and then, then come back and then come back to, come back to me? Back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hello. If you want Ian, to hello. How are you? Ian? Been in your good events. Thank you. Yeah. Ian. Ian from Lancaster. From, yes. Yeah. Lancaster. He born, got up in Preston. Yeah. Yeah. Don't brought tell up everybody. In Preston. <laughs> just, uh, Preston, just around the corner from Up Blackburn. Road. Up road. Up road. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. How are you? Is I'm good. First time, how come you're in Lancaster? If you... No, I live here. You live here, but live originally here. from... From Preston. Oh, from Preston, right, okay. I grew up in Broughton, went to school in Forward. Right, uh, Blackburn. Worked in Blackburn and Accrington. Oh, really? Oh, right. Yeah. I'm just... I'm, I'm there as well. Came here when I was 10 years old and <coughs> I've been here ever since, you know, because my parents came here. And yeah, could, you know, a lot of people did. Better way, better way of life. Yeah. So here I am. What brings you uh, to this event? I mean, how did you find a out about Muslim it? A Muslim friend of mine said, you need to go and have a look. All right. Because we talk about different things. And I see. They thought that it would give me more insight, um, which is good. Uh, yeah, he's just going to have a look around right, and then, yeah. then he'll come back to me. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's Sorry okay. about that. Um, <clears throat> have you had a actual, how long have you been in, by the way? I started there and I've got, I've got to here. Oh, so you haven't really seen all no, of it? No, not yet. just absorbing. <coughs> I've got a copy of the Quran in English, which is great. Yeah. So I can spend some quiet time in. Right. Can I ask you, once you've uh, had a look around, if you can spot me and come to me, and I'd like to sort of talk to you. Not talk, like sort of do an interview. First of all, actually, how did you end up hearing about this event? Well, I actually am new to working for Lancaster City Council. Okay. And I'm a community connector, so I wanted to actually come and meet people here because I, f I feel it's really important at the moment that we all connect from, you know, in good ways. So that is why I'm here today. Um, and that's how I heard about it through work. Okay. So what were your first impressions when you entered and when you saw everything, what were your first impressions? Um, my first impressions were it felt very welcoming. Um, and there was lots that I wanted to ask questions about. Um, and then I met you and I've had an amazing discussion about Islam and Allah and, and everything else that's in here. It's absolutely fascinating and 
and I can feel the very passionate and you know there's lots of emotion in it so I'm really glad that I've met you. Thank you, thank you. So what was your highlight so far from the things that we discussed or what you saw? What was your Actually, standout see, kind of thing? Seeing a copy of the Quran was significant for me um, but also the how you described all the foods that have been mentioned so long ago and their healing and significant properties and how we're now seeing that from a scientific basis um, I found that really fascinating and I will take a lot of those messages away Thank you, we appreciate uh, your feedback so if you could tell us anything that would help us improve the event or anything we could maybe cooperate or incorporate for future events etc any feedback? I absolutely, I absolutely loved hearing you um, sing some of the Quran, um, and I think something about a background noise with that in would be really nice. With, with the Quran? Yeah, just not all the time, but perhaps every so often hearing that because it was really. Oh, okay. I really felt. Yeah. I felt something from that. Okay, which was thank really you. Nice. Thank you. Very much. It was an honor having you thank at you. today's thank event. You. Thank you for all your time. Uh, no, thank, thank you, you for coming. Much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So, welcome. Ian. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Mohammed and yourself. I'm Mohammed. Ian, 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 yes. Ian, Ian um, uh, how did you know about this event? A friend of mine who's Muslim sent me a link. Okay. We often talk about religion and Very good. Okay. how the two appear to run the same course mm -hmm. for a period of time. Okay. What do you do, Ian? What, what, what do you... What do I, you work, I work in property. Property, okay. So uh, you must be knowing quite a few who are in, among... Uh, from the Muslims who are in property oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, I meet a, okay. a good mix of people. Okay, good, good. And Lancaster's a, a really good place to meet. Right, okay. Lots of different people. Okay. With the so, university. Um, when, 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 so do you discuss about religion uh, with, 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 yeah. with them? And, yeah, we do. And uh, so you, you have already come here with a, with a perceived... Uh, with a bit of knowledge. Uh, with a bit of knowledge as well, okay. And uh, did, uh, does, um, what do you think about the event? I mean, do, 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 you, do, you, do you reckon I think it's that really you, made well a, you, made a, you made a good effort coming down here? I think so, yeah. It's, it's an early time. start as well, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Quite early, yeah. yeah. yeah so, uh, what did you think? I mean, walking about, is there anything which you, um, which you knew about and then, you know, maybe helped you ca clarify with yeah. the, this event? I know about the five pillars. Of Islam. I know the similarities with the Old Testament. Okay, okay. Um, and it's interesting to see, I think, some of the exhibits that you have with the timeline mm -hmm. yep. of Islam yep. mm -hmm. and also to find out about the science, yes. etc., uh, back from 700. Yes, it's right. quite amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a time, uh, a period uh, where the history has totally, you know, yeah. deleted from the, from the history. Have you ever had a, uh, an opportunity to read the Quran? I have a copy here. You have a copy? A free Very copy, good. which a is free copy, absolutely. The, Do you know what does the word Quran mean? No. You will be surprised. It simply means to read. Okay. <laughs> good. So I got a Quran, my Quran. And you have a Quran, it is to be read. Yes. And because that book, the title of the book itself is inviting you to have a look at it. Yeah. Read it and see if this makes sense or not. If it's not, it's your choice is yours. No problem. Because the Quran itself is, uh, says in a, in, a, in, a, in a verse, in chapter number two, verse number 257, mm -hmm. it says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Okay. Truth stands out clear from error. So the choice is yours. Take it or leave it. So chapter 3 and chapter 19 chapter two. are good chapter chapters two. to read. All the chapters, in fact, have different, you know, <laughs> angle of... <laughs> all the chapters are very good in, in, in a in different angle. And you will really enjoy verse by verse by verse when it goes down. It's not a normal textbook, which is a once upon a time type of book. Okay, it it, it jumps from topics to uh, thing. Which which uh, copy have so you taken? The Bible. The, uh, it, 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 you can see that there. Yeah. But Bible has the way it starts. You know, it goes in the beginning. It was a, the yeah. Quran doesn't do that. It's it starts. It's a, because this, uh, the the first um, verse which was revealed to Muhammad peace be upon him was the ninety seventh chapter yeah. in the Quran. Yeah, the first five verses which came in. But the Quran is not arranged that way. Quran has got the, the Surah Al-Fatiha, which is which was revealed early in the in, in the Meccan period, which was uh, but and it was revealed in total 
seven verses were revealed in total, and that were, uh, uh, chapter was to seek guidance from God Almighty. Yeah. But the 97th chapter, first five verses of the 97th chapter was revealed in the in the first instance when the Quran came down yeah. in the in that time. But this was again not arranged by him. It was arranged by God Almighty yeah. by His instructions, which one should go where and where should go. The Quran was revealed over 23 years. It didn't come down in one go as a book. 23 years. Can you imagine to make it stand so pristine and accurate and not yeah. contradicting with each other? No, have to be revised. No, it was a one man who uh, was a, an illiterate. Who had the uh, you know? Who had the opportunity to know all this uh, information, uh, which was never ever uh, you know known Incredible. to him. I look forward to reading this. That's a thing. It's got a beautiful index at the back, so it's a very uh, very um, uh, easy for you to even look at particular tap chapters, okay. and you can look at which pa chapter and the verses cross there and cross reference it as well. Really, is that okay? Is there anything else you would like to know about? No. So the, I... anything and everything you see here is starts from there. That is the start, the Quran. Right. Okay. I think it's been really, really well presented. Thank you very much for, for, yeah, thank for coming. Thank you. But you, it's, been you a pleasure. Make, it's a pleasure meeting you as well. Like, thank you very okay. much for your time. And you, it's time for another samosa then. <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> that way, that way. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Whitaker. I'm currently the Mayor of Lancaster City Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, to grace this occasion. And I'm really thankful to you for give, getting some time out and come here to grace this uh, occasion. And I hope you will have a good experience and good feeling about the Muslim community in Lancaster and overall uh, the, the feeling about the Islam and Muslims. Well, and once again, thank you very much for, for coming here. I would like to hear a few words from you about uh, what your feeling is uh, about this event and how, how did you feel uh, about this thing going on here? Yeah, can I just first start off by saying a big thank you to, for inviting me to this event. It's been a great honour. And um, in attending this event, um, I've learnt a lot about your community and how you... Um, how your community is values yourselves and your religion but also value our community as well I think it's an important event because it's um, a golden opportunity to, to enable us to start to um, talk to each other as a community and respect each other as a community and respect our um, different religions um, within our district so it is a it is a coming together event and um, I think we need to see more of these events um, in the future so it gives me great pleasure to endorse this kind of event and um, you're welcome to our town hall anytime. Thank you so very much and I think uh, you resonated or echoed what the our objective is here, we, uh, the main objective was just to showcase the people, the wider community about the Islam and the Muslim community uh, culture and also to inculcate uh, or foster a strong relationship between the community and building the bridges between the communities and I hope we have, uh, we are up to to, to certain point uh, on, on achieving our objective. Uh, I, I really hope we, you have taken it that way. Yeah, culture sharing is very important and also loving each other loving our uh, neighbors is very important because there's more that unites us as a community and that divides us i think that's important to affirm as well thank you very much for your thank you sir. thank you for you. Me, yes. thank you very much. i'm the beadle of lancaster uh, my responsibility is to look after the mayor get him to functions make sure he's safe wherever we go and uh, and basically that's about it really but I do it, no, because I do it every year, where the mayor only serves a year, I am, I'm here every year. So next year I will be here again, um, and I go all over the country. So basically, uh, Chris is, uh, he's, he's a civil servant. <laughs> of sorts, yeah. So his seat is confirmed. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have to lose it. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Chris, what do you think about this event? Uh, basically, this is a Dis Discover Islam event, and uh, we try to hold it in different parts of the country. And uh, this is this is the second time we've come to Lancaster. Alhamdulillah, by uh, by the will of Allah, 
and uh, I'd like to tell Chris what are, what are his first impressions. I um, I actually enjoy it. I, I have an interest. I think we were saying earlier on. I have an interest in religions, all religions, um, and it's nice to see these sort of things going on and getting. It's a shame that there aren't more English people here. Uh, rather than when you look around and you see there's a lot of Muslim people, but it should be more English people. And more, if more English people attended things like this, maybe we would all start to get a different view of, of how things are developing, not only in England, but around the world. You know, and it is a shame, as I was saying, fortunately in some respects, it's the minority of people that cause problems. It doesn't matter what religion they are or where they are from, it's the minority that causes the problems. But we tend to get up, caught up in that. It's, I think one of the analogies you made was, if you're a football supporter, you only support Arsenal. So you have a hatred of every other football team because you're an Arsenal supporter. You know, does it mean that if you're Islamic or Muslim, that you can't sort of have an interest in something else? Or I'm a Christian, Church of England, you know, but I can have an interest in what everybody else is doing. Uh, I'd like to, I'd just like to add, you know, the basic point where we can stand off is we're all human beings, we've all got two eyes, nose, ears, same, everyone is right, but there's just some side differences in colour and all that, but it's the basic, anatomy. if you look inside your anatomy, it's the same thing, so if everyone understands that, then we can have a good dialogue, but if if you look at the outside and then you say, oh no, then that's where all the problems start. So what can bind us is, we, if we just acknowledge that we are all, we all made of atoms, molecules, the same thing, we are all made of water, it's the same thing. So then it'll be much easier to, for whatever we set out. For any, anything, it's, it's not only religion, it's whatever we do in life, if, if we just if we get, grasp that thing, then that will make it much, much easier. Excellent. Excellent. Anything else you might like to add? Just because um, you've seen some of the posters and uh, some of the leaflets and so on. Is there anything that sort of stood out for you and you thought you didn't know that? Um, not really, because I've been to quite a few of these. And I've been into, um, I don't know if you've ever been up to Accrington. Accrington yeah. has a new mosque. Right, no, I've not been well, there. Well, it's very it's, close so, I've been to the new mosque in Accrington. We were invited there um, last year to the opening of this new mosque. And that's interesting because, uh, again, it's like this, people are talking to you. I think the, the most important thing is people need to talk more to each other. It doesn't matter, because you're right, it's not just about religion. It's about whether you're white, you're black, or whatever. You know, people just need to get on. You cut me, I bleed. I cut you, you bleed. You know, it's, it's we all bleed. It's, it's, we're all the same, as you've said, you know. But I just, I just enjoy it. Maybe I'm a one-off. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much indeed. No, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Nice one. Thank you've you. been let off. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. See the nice the you now. Anyway, it's been yeah. nice talking to you. Yeah. Hi there, my name is Safiq Master. Um, I live in Lancaster. I was uh, born and bred in Lancaster. And uh, I work with Phil. Um, he uh, has a business, uh, he does all the headstones, uh, obviously, for Lancaster City. My, obviously, I'm a committee member in uh, Lancaster Islamic Society, where, obviously, I got introduced to Phil, and I liaise with, obviously, for the cemeteries, that's where Phil makes all the headstones. So I'm just going to introduce to Phil, um, just asking him a few questions of how he feels the uh, event is going and uh, what he feels like. So, oh, over right, to you, yeah. Phil. Uh, right, well, I, I say, as Safiq has said, I'm, I'm Phil Taylor, I own Fraser's Monumental Masons, and that's how I got to meet Safiq through we do lots of headstones, including the, most of the Muslim ones in Lancaster as well. Safiq sent me a WhatsApp yeah. message. Yeah. Because I do all the, obviously, obviously all the cemeteries, yeah. I, I work very closely with the fire brigade, the police, and obviously the hospital. So obviously, as soon as I got, I got uh, noted for leaflets, we saw obviously we bombarded all the my friends and family, and, yes. uh, and they made a great effort. You know, I really appreciate for their time and uh, yeah. that they've uh, shown them to come down. You know, so it's very kind of Phil to come down. Yeah. Just going back to Phil, um, have you had a look around and what did you think of the posture, signs, is there anything 
Well, I find it interesting in that it's always then about other people's beliefs, no matter whether it's political beliefs or religious beliefs. It's always interesting to hit, to find out about other people's views. I know. I've, I've, I've only looked halfway around yet and to be honest I've seen things that are, I'm fairly familiar with and learned a little bit more, one or two items. A um, few more questions I've not had a chance to ask yet, but uh, there are ask them now, interesting. Well, interesting. Well, okay. yeah, I think, I think we'll, we'll ask the more learned ones hopefully anyway, but I'm going to okay. show them around anyway and uh, sometimes obviously they do ask me good questions, so I'll tell just one minute and uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll get them. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, so uh, we'll do our best, yeah, so I uh, appreciate right. it enough. I feel for coming down, thank you very much. Hi, my name is Rashida, I'm from Leyland. We're here um, to do the Dawah um, with MYMN and basically we're here to just let people know what we're about. Um, uh, just we've got all the artifacts about the Quran and, and, and today we have got Kathy, um, who's just taken the Shahada. Hello. Yeah, so Kathy, what, what made you come into this? I just saw a sign and I came in, something brought me here and I've met all these wonderful people and I've got the Quran and this lovely lady asked me to do this and I've done it and I feel really good. Yeah, and yeah, you feel light. I, I do, yes. So we say yes. that God inspires the people and, and they, they, they bring them here because yes. in their life they've done something so good. Yes. And then that's, you come here today yes. and you actually feel good, you feel I light. I do, I do. And yeah. I've got a whole different good impression of Brilliant. Brilliant. This is it's what we're brilliant. here for. No, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Just to ask you, uh, yes. Who's it? Kathy. 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 You know, did you just come of your own accord or were you invited? No, I just saw the man outside and said there was something on and I've always been interested so I came and I'm glad I did. It's been really good and you should do this every week. Okay. <laughs> yes. What was it? Um, that yeah. So what was that sort of got from, uh, to made you believe that, you know? I think I'm a Christian and, and it, there's no discipline, there's no faith there anymore. It's just a Sunday thing to go to. And I see all your people and it's not just a Friday thing. No, it's, it's life, every day, really. yeah. And it's, it's a way, really good. way of life. And Absolutely. you have good food. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot of people I got, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, no. what did you know about Islam before you actually... I lived in Burnley, so I knew some Muslims, but there's none where I live. But this is great. Really great. That, that's and I, brilliant. I've changed my whole opinion. I thought women in Islam were downtrodden, but obviously they're not. Yes. Yes. So it's been and really good. Yeah. yeah. And it is our choice that we, we do cover yes. ourselves. Well, with, when I was a child in church, yes. we covered our head. Absolutely. But, but as time's gone, yeah. Christiana, so, and yeah. we so, stick to our, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh, can I have a nice big hug yeah, from you? Thank you. It's so lovely to meet you. Thank you. Oh, and I hope the rest of your future yes. will be absolutely great, and, you'll, and it's a learning step for you from now, all the way through. Yes. And, I'm pissed with you. And, and to you as well. Yes, to thank you. you. As well. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Kathy. Appreciate it. Right, hi. Uh, Hello. Um, what's your name, firstly, if you can introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Katie. Katie? Yep. Hiya, Katie. Um, we've uh, obviously laid on this uh, event in uh, Lancaster. Uh, it's called Meet Your Muslim Neighbours, so it's just like all of you meeting the Muslims and seeing how uh, they act and interact with the rest of society. And I just wanted to know what actually made you come to uh, to uh, this event today? Well, I've seen actually that there's been one on before and I've not been able to come in. Um, I'm actually originally from London, so um, I grew up in a, oh, well, a much more diverse environment than I'm used to now. So I thought it would actually be quite nice to come up and just have a look at what was going on and just find out a little bit more than what I already knew. How did you find out about the event? Uh, I was actually stopped on the uh, street the corner area. over there. <laughs> yeah. So, Zahid, can you interview uh, Kate? Yeah. Hi. Just, um, if you can come here, because I need, oh, sorry. need that on the corner. Okay. Right? Can you see there? Just have a look there. So, you oh, can right. stay in the middle there. And I can get the sound, so if you can just... I was just asking Katie about um, how she found out about, about the event, and she was just saying, oh, right. you can continue and just tell us 
how you found out. Somebody told the truth. Can I record it as well? You can do. I've All right. got one there as well. So. <laughs> Because I'm using this first time. Oh, wow. Because I've got a problem with my both hands. Ah, okay. So I just bought this. Ready? Yes. Ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Hi. What's your name? Katie. Katie. Thank you for coming today. So, um... How did you, what do you think about the event today? I think it's really good actually. It's, I've learned some new things about the Quran and about the history of uh, Islam and scientific development. So that's interesting, yeah. That's nice. And uh, you do your hina because we're doing three hina as well. Today. Ah, okay. And uh, because there's a lot of people, they, they, they don't know nothing about Islam. And uh, as a community, uh, we thought, let's do some community event. So to remove misconception anybody has. So uh, and that's why we are doing it here today because uh, a lot of the public they are very sweet, they are very nice people, but they are confused. You see, and uh, that's very nice you, that you came. You see, and uh, and that's why we are here to answer your questions. If you have any inquiries. Don't keep it in your heart, because a lot of times people, they say, oh, I don't want to hurt the person feelings, <laughs> all right? So we usually say to them, come on, be open. Just take everything out, whatever you have. Because sometimes, because I do community work, I, I, I deal with people, uh, you know, they ask me questions. Because a lot of people in this country, they have spiritual problems. They are depressed, they're looking for happiness. True, yes, yeah. They, they have everything. They have money, they have house, they have whatever. But they spiritually, they are looking for something to give them peace of mind. And that's why God says in the Quran, we call it Allah, He says, if you have a little bit dark, uh, if, if you have a little bit light in your heart, I'll take you out from that, from darkness to the light but you have to put effort yes yeah. to look for that light you see and that's why we are here today because Islam is not something new you see it's been there for centuries and centuries and, 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 and there must be some reason that God brought you here you see sometimes you're looking for something you see and God says, I will guide the person, you see, and, uh, and also God says, like for example, I used to be messing around, I, I, I never prayed, I never done this, but deep inside, I was looking for something, happiness, and I said, God help me, I want to be a good person, I want to do good in the community, I have everything, but inside I'm empty. And that's when the verse of the Quran I opened by chance. I just ran them. And it says, if you have a little bit light, I'll take you out from that. So then I start practicing it. And spiritually, like for example, we do we do five times a day pray. pray. You feel more happy. You see? Because you I always say to people, like for example, we human beings, we need food to survive. Or spirit, or soul, these spiritual things. Is it not unfair? We don't give that right to our soul. Yeah. And that's why people are hungry. They go in to drink, 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 but they don't get satisfied. If you look at those rich uh, movie actors, they have millions, but they're not happy. I'm, I'm sure you have heard news, they do suicide, they do hang themselves, because spiritually they're hungry. And that's what Islam is about, to give you that food to your soul. You see? And, and that's why we, we call Islam, it's not just a religion, it's a complete way of life. It means respecting life looking after your children, give the love to the children, and when you have a relationship as a husband and wife, be honest with each other, do not deceive each other. When the woman is working, 
the money that she has is her. I'm not right to say to give me that money is her right. And also, he has given every individual person their rights, even animals. See, and and animals. Uh, there was a lady. She was so thirsty. In those days, people used to dig, uh, you know, the well, well, you know, to take water out. And she was walking, traveling, and she was thirsty. Because back then, they didn't have those conditions. So she took her shoe to take the water out. Then she saw a dog thirsty. And guess what? She gave the water. صلى عليك الله يا فجرا بدا في القبلتين يقرنا جمع لنا صلى عليك الله في أهل السماء وبفضله صلى الهدى بأرضنا صب حقيق بالوداد المعلانا أرجو الشفاة يا إلهي حبلنا عفوا به نلقى مقام نبينا I have never been to a mosque, no. Is there any is there any Lancaster? Yeah, there, there is, is there is a mosque. What, there's a small the, uh, mosque on Dallas feedback? Road by the train station. Um, but I've never been. It's right. not. Uh, was it it's in another premises. It's not like purpose built okay. mosque. Do you know what I mean? When you're listening to the Quran, how was it? What did you feel? It's not very beautiful. Relaxing. Yeah, it's very calm. Did it calm your soul? Okay. What advice would you give to to the communities about the event? Well, I think it's really good to come in and, and talk to people from different faiths and things like that because you learn a lot. And like you were saying before about misconceptions, I think there's actually a lot of misconceptions and unfair misconceptions about Islam and Muslim people that lots of people have because they don't understand. So actually, if you can learn things about who is Muhammad or who is Allah or, you know, about the Quran and what's in it and, you know, how people think about their faith and things like that, it would actually help people to have a better relationship and a better understanding of those sorts of things. And what will you say to the Muslim community? What message will you give to Muslim community? I think, um, you know, the Muslim community in Lancaster, I think, you know, you have got neighbours and you have got people that do understand and, you know, are welcoming and, you know, we want to have more understanding of that. And I think that's why events like this are so good. Oh, that's sweet. That's very nice. No problem. <laughs> okay, hi Heather. I hope you're well. If you can just give a brief introduction of yourself and how you ended up coming here and what made you come? Well, I don't live here. Um, I came here today to meet with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> where I live here. Wow. wow. I was coming along the street and somebody mentioned this was here. I study something called theosophy. Philosophy, so I'm in wow. No, theosophy. Oh, theosophy. What? So I'm interested in comparative religion. 
um, science, philosophy, those sorts of things. So whilst I do not follow a religion, I am interested in others' religions and the similarities and differences between us. Interesting. So that drew me in to, to have a look and we've had a look round and we've had a very interesting chat with one of your chaps there about your five pillars. So I, I've, I've learned a bit about that. One of the girls in my Theosophy study group is a Sufi Muslim, but I've never really discussed it with Islam, her. So okay. this was an opportunity. Interesting. Yes. So what was like the highlight of the event and what stood out for you? I think lo looking at the, the five pillars I found interesting. Um, discussing the differences in the Bible and the Quran I found interesting. As I say, I don't follow the Bible, but I am spiritual but not religious, so I, I lead a good life, I do the right things, all that sort of stuff. So I'm just interested, really, from, from that perspective of um, you know the comparisons between religions. Okay, and do you have any questions after obviously going around and being uh, having discussions and learning all different things? Any questions still on your mind? About I what we've the, the only thing I still find disturbing is why do women be segregated when you're uh, at prayer? Now I understand from the chap I spoke to that you're not supposed to touch somebody that, that doesn't belong to you, so to speak. I still find that odd in an equal um, society that you can't pray a lot of next yeah. to each other. Yeah. Oh, good you know, just make a bit more space, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But oh, don't segregate. Yeah. Oh, good question, interesting question. Now, the answer to that, in short, is normally when we pray, well, I'll ask you this question first, when we pray, who do we pray for and who do we pray to? You, you're praying to Allah, right? God, yeah, we're praying to Allah, we're yeah. praying to God. So obviously when you're praying to God, God wants us to be fully connected, yes. where you're concentrating, yeah. where all thoughts excluding himself are elsewhere so you just put them to a side and you're only connecting with God yep. so you need to fully connect with him yep. so in this day and age where we already have so many distractions as it is we're walking and now we have all these phones when we come to the when we come into pray the first thing after we've prayed oh, I need to check my phone and check my phone and even if before we're starting to pray we're thinking oh I hope I don't get a message or whatever Oh, I need to get to this game, I need to do this. So we've already got so many distractions as it is. Well, that's no, no, let, me let me finish, let me finish. So now, when we're praying, and obviously you do believe that opposite genders, they, uh, they have this attraction in them, and obviously this is like innate and this is a natural thing, where a male is attracted to a female and a female attracted to a male. So now obviously if I'm praying and I have a female next to me, now obviously I don't disrespect her or Islam doesn't say that there's inequality, there's, there's you know, a female is not equal to a male. Islam respects them both, gives them both a status. In fact, Islam gives females such a high status that if we look in the Quran, if Allah mentioned, God mentioned a female by name and the only female that was mentioned by name, it was the, uh, the mother of Mary and she's mentioned many times yep. and God has given females a very high status so it's not as if that God's not given them status so Understand. Islam does give both the status but the thing is when you're praying you need to connect with God so if you've got a female next to you we already believe in Satan he whispers thoughts and he doesn't want you to connect with God so when you're praying with all the distractions in this day and age Satan trying to attack you with his whispers and you know if you've got a, a, a female that's next to you, that's a non-direct family member female, you could imagine how many thoughts Satan may whisper in you and then you can't fully concentrate with God. So it's only for this reason that, you know, a female I and a male is it's, it's not advisable. It's not I, I just find, as, well, some, then, having said as that, somebody who's disciplined, that my mind wouldn't do that. But also, I'm a, I'm a meditator. I meditate for an hour every day anyway. But I close my eyes and therefore my thoughts, I block out every single thing next to me. But if there was an attractive man ne sat next to me, it wouldn't make any difference to no, me. No, no, but that's, you're saying it's discipline and it comes with time. But why not just from the start, just abolish those things that could attack you as it is, but attack you, you, you like Satan's it, whispers and as, whatever. As I understand what you're saying completely, but as an outsider, seeing women being segregated just doesn't sit well. And, and I'll, I'll add to that. We don't fully segregate women off. 
So if I'm at home and it's prayer time, my mother could pray with me. No, I'm my talking sister. about in the mosque. Yeah. It, it yeah. seems, no matter what you say, and I hear what you say and I understand it, as, a, as an external person looking at it, I, I would feel excluded. I would feel excluded. No, that's, that's your opinion? I know. And obviously, I know. I, I, I disagree. I respect, but I, I respect you. As well. I respect yeah. you and your opinion, but I disagree yeah. with the opinion for the reasons that I mentioned. But you can uh, understand why women who aren't Muslim may feel that way. Firstly, I think because they're not in the tradition, yeah. they're outside the tradition, so obviously it's hard for them until you don't experience it but yourself. If you're trying so to if change the opinions of people around you, which I assume this is part of. No, no, try, we're, we're, not, to, we're not trying to, we're, to help us understand. Yeah, yeah the more thing, this is more. But I think it needs explaining more. No, this is more about creating awareness and community cohesion no, and, and building ties and yeah. and obviously educating people about what Islam really is. Because sadly, at many places out there, uh, they're giving like this yeah. negative portrayal of Islam. Yeah. So if we don't hold such events no, and understand. tell them what Islam really is, but be then aware that, that women will look at that and still feel excluded. No, no, that's fine. I understand. But how would you feel if a stranger just ends up coming and standing next to you? Would you feel personally comfortable? I would feel very uncomfortable. It depends on people's personal space. I don't have a problem with somebody next to me. So I, I, I sit with meditation and I have people around me. It doesn't matter yeah. to me. No, the, the, one thing is getting used to that environment, but in prayer, you know, when we pray, I don't know if you've ever witnessed a, pr a Muslim prayer, but we have to stand like shoulder to shoulder, like yeah. very close, like like this basically. So yeah. literally nearly touching. Yeah. So it would be very uncomfortable for a, a female where she's gone to the mosque, for example, and then randomly, suddenly, a a male who's a stranger just I comes need, and stands next to I need to speak to um, some female <laughs> Muslims and find out. Yeah, yeah. But, but thank you. Namaste. Yeah, no problem. Anyway, Namaste. I hope you <laughs> I clarified you did. and I hope thank it you. made things a bit more clear. Thank you. Anyways, an honor having you. One more last question. Um, any feedback in how we could improve the event, where we could implement more things or anything of improvement? I think it would be useful to, to give a talk. A talk, okay. Where you could cover some of these things and then have an exhibition afterwards okay. that people could look around. Because I feel, you know, if you had a talk and you'd mentioned various things and said they were out here, then you could come out of the talk and then come and have a look at the things that, that interest you. But from my perspective, you know, I, I as I say, I study theosophy, yeah. uh, and so I'm looking at, at comparisons between all faiths. As I say, I don't have one of my own, but I do believe. In, creator, in a creator, not a man, but creation uh, and how things happen. And to, to me, religion is like a layer between me and it. And I don't mean layer, I go direct. Okay. Anyway, thank you very thank much. You. Really appreciate Namaste. your thank feedback. You. Thank you, bye. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر سميع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله مرکم جی جی ہم بھائی ہیں یہاں تھا آپ نے سیدھا جائی ہے جی جی تو مرکم آگئی تھا جی جی نیکس ویلیج ہیشم ویلیج آہ آپ نزدیک سے آہ رہے ہیں رہے ہیں سکو کچھ ہے آہ So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Becky. I'm a police officer at Lancaster Police Station. Um, I'm Rashida from Leyland. Hi, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm James. I'm a police community support officer here at Lancaster as well. So what has brought you here today? Um, so, well, I'm working with the community team for a couple of weeks um, and we got told about the event and said if we wanted to, you know, come over, then I've just started shift. So before I got sidetracked into anything else, I thought we'd pop over and just yeah. come and find out what it was all about, really. That's right. So, so far, what, what, you know, what, what, have you, what have you seen? Um, so we looked around a bit. Uh, yeah. When we first come in, I'd look about the, the stores, about the women's rights and how, you know, women looked at. And obviously, you've helped me put on the hijab. And that's that right. On. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's and then the two of you. Yeah. yeah. So. What about yourself? Uh, so we heard about what was happening today, just from about people and talking on the station and probably just uh, come on and check it out really yeah that's brilliant i'm glad you've yeah. come down yeah absolutely thank you and all, uh, just going back to yourself and all your, how did you actually uh, find out about the event Was somebody actually tell you I think somebody had got in contact with um, the um, well with, with, with the station itself, um, and one of the sergeants just said to us today, well they said like earlier in the week as well, but just said to us again today, you know, if you want to go across, then then do. So yeah, it was, I think it was through an email at the station. Have you ever had? Have you ever been to an event like this? And what would you say going forward? Do you think we should do more of that just to allay people's fears? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Uh, could you introduce yourself please? Certainly, so my name is Louise Hodder and I'm a parent um, of children in Lancaster and my husband's a school teacher in Lancaster. Wow, great. And I work up at the university. And you work at the university? Yeah, I do. And what, what do you do with uh, So I work with students, um, I'm a learning developer and I help them with their essays and reports and uh, how to prepare for exams, things like that. Very good. Praise be to God. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, how did you come to know about this event? So I had seen it on Facebook, there was quite a big campaign on Facebook and people were sharing it on the local Lancaster Past and Present um, Facebook page and then also as we were walking into town today uh, we spoke to one of the gentlemen outside who was like oh make sure you come in and come in, come in and see us and we were like, yep, we'll come in once we've done the shopping, which is what we have done. So you yeah, okay, we've just finished your shopping <laughs> So we finished our shopping. Down. Well we knew that it was on, so we made a point that we were to come. Very good. Um, just to uh, ask you another well, number of questions. Firstly, have you had a look around and what do you think of the event? I think it's a very well laid out event, it's very welcoming. I don't think there's too many tables crammed in. And then I think you've got lots of different aspects about um, being a Muslim. So you've got the, the information about being a woman in, in faith. And then you've also got some of the interesting things about Muhammad and then also about all the inventions and what, yeah. um, the, you know, like the astrolabe. I knew about that. Uh, it's really important invention and the contribution of um, uh, Muslim inventions and Muslim items to, uh, to the whole world. To what they get to the whole world. You're quite well informed. <laughs> what are people, you'd of. be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people don't actually know that information, like mm -hmm. um, uh, the stethoscope, the uh, cat girt, and things like that. You know, in surgeries that were mm -hmm. invented yeah, by yeah. Ibn. I forget his name. Yeah. Who was a Muslim? Dude. Yes, and he did a lot of things, didn't he? That's he was. It. He was one of those. Uh, what do you call them? Like polymath. <laughs> yeah, so he, he was very, very uh, instrumental in uh, uh, some of the things that are actually used in surgery today uh, have been, you know, used Absolutely. in the past with, yes. by the uh, Muslims. Um, so, going forward, yeah. uh, just looking at what we've done here, mm -hmm. I know you agree that it's a very, very nice, very welcoming way, uh, but the message that we're obviously trying to get across to people is that, obviously, we're not... Um, what like the media portrays. Yes, it's not know. a fearful community and you're very exactly. approachable yeah, and yeah, yeah. certain individuals do not represent a community. Exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So it's only a minority that gives the majority a, you know, a bad name. Yeah. So, yes. so we're trying to sort of create awareness and uh, let people actually come and interact with the Muslims. And you probably do, well, I'm not sure, but a lot of people, because we have one in Whitehaven in, in uh, Kendall, but the White Haven one, there was only like, I think about three or four Muslim families there. I was going to say the isolated population. Exactly. So they had hardly met mm. any, any Muslims and hardly spoken to them. And, yeah. You know, so they didn't really know. So they were really, really surprised when they saw that and they were really happy yeah. with what, what we'd done. So do you think we've imparted that message today of uh, welcoming and being courteous, kind, tolerant, etc. Absolutely, kind of absolutely. Everyone's been incredibly friendly, but also very upfront in saying if you have any questions, just ask us. Ask. We won't take offence yeah. because we're trying to combat that kind of terrible media portrayal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, finally, uh, yes. is there anything you might be able to suggest or do you think it might help us to improve? on what we've already done, Not maybe have it in a college or a university or I don't that know. That might be a suggestion, that, that might be an idea. It's very difficult though, isn't it, where you get central buildings and the space. But yes, maybe something up at a university might be useful because, the, you know, well, the students, but also if you can influence young people more, or maybe something in a school, maybe, if you could link up with a school and and try and have maybe some sort of lunchtime event or ask them for a half day for all the school to come because people have perceptions and those are unfortunately propagated through families and that would maybe be a nice That's thing it. to do it. That's great. Thank Brilliant. you very much indeed. I Thank appreciate you so much. your input. Thank You're you. so welcome. This is where Prophet Muhammad, I'll, I'll, we'll get closer. Yep. 
Can you see this green dome? Yeah. This is where Prophet Muhammad is buried under this. Oh wow! Yeah. So you know who Prophet Muhammad yeah, is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad is uh, the, our last prophet and last yeah, messenger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Muslims, they believe in all the prophets. Yeah. You have to. to yeah, yeah. Prophet Jesus, Prophet yeah. Adam. We have to part of our faith. Yeah. If we don't believe in a prophet or any prophet, then it takes us out of the fold of our faith. Yeah. But we just believe Prophet Muhammad is the last. So he he was actually born in in Mecca. Oh, that was Mecca there. Yeah. That, yeah. That's oh, Mecca. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then, then he migrated to Medina and then this is where he passed away because he had a big community. So at that time there was a small mosque. Oh, so he's not actually buried in Mecca? Then. No, no, he's oh, buried right. in Medina. Yeah, right. And then over the times it all expanded and it became... So why, 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 why do you point towards Mecca when you're buried? So basically, can you see this? This is, this is in Mecca and yeah. this is the house of God. It's called the Kaaba. Yeah. So we, we, have you seen that? We'll go a bit this way. <coughs> so can you see the house of God there? Oh yeah, yeah. So this is just like a sculpture. A, a replica, yeah. Yeah, replica. So basically, we believe that to be the house of God in the sense that we have to face it yeah. in prayer. Yeah. Now we don't worship it. Yeah. And yeah, in Islam, it's, yeah, it's like a yeah. symbol yeah. and a direction so to a human. There. It's, that, that's it's, where, it's an empty inside. Yeah. It's yeah. just an empty building. There's pillars. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing inside. I see. Yeah. Now, a human obviously in this world can't see God, can't yeah. really physically touch God. Yeah. But obviously, as a human, when you love something, then you want to basically see something or f feel a sense of belonging. Yeah. So that's why we've got this house of God. We face it that direction, Hello? just so we know. Okay, my son. <laughs> تروح تذهب إلى بيتك. Okay, sir. So basically, that's the direction we face. Yeah. And God, and it's like you know, in life, you want to stay on one direction. Yeah, yeah. The straight path. Yeah. So this is the message. So and keep yourself focused. Yeah. So don't like face that way and that way. It's just keep yourself focused in one way. So where is this? Where we back in the world is this? In Arabia. So there's a city, um, a country called Arabia, Saudi yeah. Arabia now basically, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So in Saudi Arabia, there's two cities, one's Mecca, one's Medina. Oh, right. And they're about, depending on what mode of travel you take, they're about two hours away right. from each other. Now they've got a train system, so um, they're saying that it'll take you there, you know, in a very short distance. Right. That's a massive building. It's, a it's massive, yes, it increased, you know, over the years. Yeah. And so many, I would say millions of people visit both Mecca and Medina. Yeah. From all around the world, Muslims. So what is in here? What's in it's the a mosque. It's a mosque. So, oh, it's all one mosque. It's all one mosque. Wow. The main part of the mosque is here. Yeah. You know where the Prophet Muhammad was. Right. Yeah. He's buried under this. Yeah. In the ground, underneath. Yeah. And under, so, so basically, you know, yeah. Prophet Muhammad's house in his time, 1400 years ago, his house was here, uh, and the mosque was right next to his house. Yeah. And the Prophet Muhammad passed away in his house, and obviously. It's part of beliefs in religious texts, not just in Islam, but even previous texts, that wherever a prophet passes away, he's buried there. Right. So Prophet Muhammad passed away in his house. Just it was just next to the mosque. Right. So he was buried there, and this is where it. Is. But this dome and all this, it was created and it came way after the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. He didn't ask for this or. He didn't say, oh, I want such a big mosque. Yeah. It just came later, you know, advancement of times. Um, people started having more resources and yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah, it's, it's moment, amazing. It? When you go there and even there, um, Mecca, that feeling that you get is just mind blowing. It's so spiritual. If, yeah. Have you ever seen any videos? No, no, no. Check, check, no, on, check yeah. online. Sorry, can I just use a cake or a biscuit? Or okay? oh, well, thank you. Can we get it yourself? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So if, if you see some videos, just type in um, Kaaba or House of God in Arabia, people worshipping. Mm -hmm. So at least you'll get an understanding. Mm -hmm. And even Medina as well, the mosque of Medina, how people pray. But when you physically go there, that spiritual sense of feeling is, is like mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. what, what faith do you follow yourself? Sorry. No, no, don't, don't worry. Take your time. Christian. Oh, Christian. Christian yeah. oh, okay, okay. And which part? Which denomination? So, my wife and my children are Roman Catholic. Also, oh, your child is Roman Catholic. And yourself? I'm Anglican. Oh, interesting. So, how come there's a divide? Well, 
Oh, no, it's just, um, I was brought up at the, uh, the Church of England and my wife was brought up at the Catholic. So did you have a lot of clashes and stuff? No, not really. No. No? We, 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 we have no idea. Not really. I mean, we agree to disagree on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just like with us, isn't it? Christians and, and uh, um, Muslims. We've got a lot of commonality. The, the important things are common, I think. And probably the same with you. I think our, if the things that we would class as important are very, very similar, I think, to yeah. Muslims. Uh, Count is important. So uh, I, don't, uh, I, don't see a, I don't personally see a great divide between different people, you know. Uh, there are people who like to make a divide. And, uh, some of these terrorist people, uh, they're just uh, causing divides, which are not Yeah, really, uh, which is no good, yeah, really yeah. True, true, true. Anyway, I'll let your daughter anyway, collect her gift. Thank and you very much. Her. If you've got any more questions, feel free to take all the literature around, you know, the, all thank these... Thank you, yeah. Uh, we'll just have a look at Mecca before we go. Uh, yeah, 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 no problem. Okay, take care, take care. Prolong the discussion with this guy. Right? I did a bit, but then, because he had his daughter with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to... Good idea. <coughs> تريد الكيس؟ تأخذ الكيس. Surprised they agreed well. Was it this lady? Yeah, I can't remember. Hi, how are you doing? You alright? Everything good? Have you had a look around? I have, and I've been talking to people. Alright, so how have you found how have you found the event? It's very interesting. Are you, are you alright just to, we want feedback from attendees? Just to have a two, three minute interview? Or it's up to you if you. No? No problem, that's fine. No problem. Okay, I'll write something when I get down. Yeah, we've got feedback forms downstairs. Yeah.
he's he's a he's the leader of the mosque in the Saint Helens. Right. So he can he can recite it from his memory. The entire thing. The students were sitting there, going like that. Did he do that? Um, well, it's not a must to shake, but it's just. Uh, but it helps you memorize, right? Helps. Well, I would say it's more traditional, more traditional. You know, because like you're keeping yourself engaged, and yeah. but you don't have to do that. You don't have to move about. Well, I was telling your colleague that we were in the Amayyad Mosque in Syria, and it was oh, yeah. possible to go there. Yeah, yeah. And in one corner of the mosque, there was a, an older man and about a dozen younger boys, really, and he was reading them stuff, and then they would repeat. And, and yeah, and rock, did this. yeah. What should I take it as what you do? Um, the shaking part, I didn't do as much. <laughs> Forget the shaking part. <laughs> That's just like a personal thing, but there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing How wrong long with it. did it take you to remember? It took me exactly one year and eight months. Wow. And how many, how many words would it be? Um, well, depending on exactly how many words, I'm not confident how many words. I would have to, but the, 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 pay, um, the book that I, the Quran I use, obviously there's only one version of the Quran, there's no separate versions. However, there's variant sizes. So can you see this is like a big version yeah. and small. So this, the Quran I used, it had, um, I don't remember exactly how many pages. It had about 848, if I'm correct, yeah. pages. Yeah, well, I mean, I actually, I used to know, but I forgot now how the many Quran? words there are in the Quran. Well, because it's easy to find out because yeah. people have done an in-depth in studies on the Quran to find out exactly how many words, how many letters, um, how, so obviously I've not looked into it. I've got to say to you, I had a postgrad once, an Egyptian girl, yeah, yeah. she did a, um, a mathematical study of, of the, the Quran. Of the Quran. Okay. And the basic problem was that it was difficult to identify the words because you don't put the vowels in. You supply the vowels, all you have the consonants. So it depends on yeah which language you are trying to. But in, in Arabic, it's they're saying the total number of verses is six thousand two hundred thirty-six. Yeah. Um, that's total number of verses, but we ask for words, right? That's that's to, that's uh, how many words? Types. That's types. Words of the Quran counted as seventy-seven thousand, yeah. about seventy-seven thousand. Yeah, like a modern-day thesis or a novel. Or something. But have. Have you come across a book that is memorized in its entirety, just like the Quran, by so many people across? So this is one of our biggest miracles and living miracles because it's been 1400 years, over 1400 years, and this tradition has been kept going and alive and it's never been put down and it's never changed. And I'm yet to find a book that has lasted for over 1400 years without changes. And it's not like a coincidence that the Quran is not changing, because not even one does change it, but because God mentions in the book himself, in the verse, in chapter 15, verse 9, that we revealed this book, the Quran, the remembrance, the message, and we will preserve it, we will safeguard it and protect it. So God basically has promised in the Quran himself, in this verse, that chapter 15, verse 9, that I'm going to preserve it word to word, let it, so no one can. If, uh, wipe it out and because of this promise we believe that it's never going to change and it's proven this promise has proven to be true until now I, I take it you memorize you memorize the Arabic version right yeah yeah so the translations into other yeah yeah many languages yeah yeah but you when you memorize you memorize the Arabic correct and the Arabic is the classical Arabic yes yeah so you don't you don't update it in any way no there's no need because this fusha this is, it's known as Fusha, the clear Arabic, the classical. There's no need of updating because if we look at the different dialects of the Arabic language now present in the world, they're increasing on a daily basis because a lot of these dialects, they have influence from different languages, different regions. So they add stuff and, and they take things away and then they kind of compile their own dialect. So it becomes very tricky. But when it comes to the the, the fusha, okay? Sorry, this is a Syrian child I was doing interpreting for a few years back, so they've recognized. Um, so yeah, so what I was saying, so this is it stayed the same, the classical. 
since the day was revealed and, and there's no need to change it um, because it's so kind of pristine in the way that God has presented it that even the people that speak different dialects when they come to learn this they are kind of astonished and not just the Muslims I'm talking about even the non-Muslims so yeah so when you're not memorizing the Quran yeah, yeah. do you have a job or do you do this professionally so memorizing the Quran is not something that is compulsory now I'm an Imam a leader of a mosque so I lead the prayers lead the congregations yeah. and but is, that, is that your job or do you that is my job I lead the prayers yeah. That's, and we have five prayers in a day so I'm leading the prayers yeah where is that in St. Helens. St. Helens? Yeah. You come from all over the place. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Cordoba? I've been to Spain. I've not been to Cordoba. I want to go. I'm, I'm, a favor. I need to go. It's, I've it's, been I've been longing to go for quite a few years now. Yeah. Um, but the chance has occurred. Just pray for me that I get to go. I need to go for both history purposes and to see everything. Well, you really got to see that mosque. Yeah. yeah. It is... Uh, We've been to various Islamic countries, but if you want to see pure Islamic architecture, it's there. It's Spain. Yeah, because yeah, that was like a hub for Muslims back in the days, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So what, what's your name? Sorry, I forgot how to name. I'm German. Uh, Urban. Herman. Herman. Oh, Herman. Herman. I'm not which, English. I'm I've German. been in Germany. Which part? In various, south of Munich. All right. Where, I was in go? Osnabrück. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. Place, yeah. It was beautiful. I was like, I, ex I was expecting it to be more like England. And when I went to Osnabrück, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. I thought, I can stay here. Um, yeah, yeah. Germany is very civilized. Yeah. yeah. Unlike it. The laws are strict, isn't it? That's why they keep their people. Well, what I saw anyway, I'm not, I don't know the ins and outs. Uh, but when I went, what I saw, they're strict, um, which is good. And, and they keep their people in check. I have to say, speaking as a German, what I primarily admire about Islamic communities is a sense of tradition and a sense that there are ways to behave and other ways not to behave. In other words, standards are maintained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Islam seems to do that. But what I think um, is kind of influential in that is the, the Islamic teachings, because the obviously standards, the, they, they are followed by the sources, the primary sources, the Quran, which is the holy book, and the prophets teaching, the prophet sayings. So, and they stay the same throughout the ages, because we believe that, obviously as a human, we, ha we have morals, right? And, but a human, when he thinks, his morals, they don't have like boundaries. Like, for I'll give you an example. Go back 100 years, homosexuality, for example, it was illegal. But now come, now it's become legalized. Now I'm not saying I, dis, I disagree with it because of my faith, but obviously I still have to be respectful to such people. Uh, that's part of my faith as well. So if someone chooses to... A human lives by the daily as for a human. Maybe obviously it depends on what spectrum and what level. Sometimes obviously like basic things like you have to respect your elders, respect. That's, that's basically um, imbibed into everything really and everyone should know that. But I'm talking about if you go more deeper. So, so when you go to the primary sources, obviously God sets out boundaries and his lived, put morals in. And a human, obviously he's best known by his creator. When you create something, when a person, an engineer creates um, uh, an aeroplane, for example, that he knows the mechanics of everything properly. So if anything goes wrong, um, then he'll know what to do. And he, he'll, he'll, maybe he, he's devised a, a manual to guide people that look, do this, do that, because he's created it. So obviously God's our creator and he knows us best. So obviously the, the guidelines he set and the morals he set we, we follow them and obviously they, they've not changed since they were revealed. Well, so if I can put this into a nutshell, uh, the, the point of Islam is that you and your creator are in direct contact. You don't have people like bishops and priests and popes in between. Correct. You tell them you're the guy who is this, in essence the owner's manual for the Quran. The Quran's our... You know what's in it. So you tell them what? 
what they do with that is between them and God. Yes, correct, correct, correct. However, these uh, these scholars, priests, imams, whatever you want to say, in between, they're helpful in terms of not all lay people have understanding of the Quran because not everyone goes into it and it's not like compulsory you only need to know the obligations for example yeah. um, so then you consult scholars that will explain to you that look this is what this means this is how you recite it and stuff to help you aid you sure. but you don't use them as a medium that or to get to God you have to contact a, an Imam or you have you contact God yourself you recite the Quran yourself and and God tells us in the Quran on many occasions that think ponder reflect question but if, so, I were, if I was Islamic and I, w I had a question about this, I would come to you. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Because right? yeah, def I've obviously gone through the studies and I've gone through the process where I studied for a good number of years, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. Um, and I studied the science, so, so basically the rules. So not just how to recite the Quran, but the translation. Where, where did you study it? Um, I did most of my studies in, in UK, but I also went abroad. So I was in um, Pakistan for a bit. I was, I've also been Arabia. So yeah, I've been... What's your background? Um, what do you mean? I mean, were you born here? I was born and bred here. Yeah, okay, the background way, way back. My, like my parents, where they from? Yeah. So my dad's from India. Yeah. He was born and bred in India, but then he came here. Before partition, so... Happened. No, he came after partition. So he came in the 80s, I believe. My mom was born and bred here. So your, your background is, in fact, just Indian Islamic. <laughs> I would say. I was born Muslim. My dad was born Muslim as well. Yeah. But he was just born in um, India, obviously. Um, even my grandparents, they were Muslim. It goes on for generations. I would say probably six, seven hundred years uh, um, above me, they're all Muslim. Gujarat. Well, we've been to, uh, to uh, you know, the, the northern part, north of Delhi and uh, oh, right, right. Rajasthan. Uh, oh, interesting. And, and I actually went across the Thar Desert. Uh, but when we got near the Pakistan border, the guide wouldn't take us any further. Because they've got a clash. It's very I, I've sensitive been, there. I've been to both places. I've been to India and I've also been to Pakistan. Um, obviously, I went to India because through my parents. Uh, British passport, you can go anywhere, really. Um, so it's not an issue. But before I went, I was told. Because I went to Pakistan first for studies. And then I was told... Oh, you won't ever be able to go to India because of the clash. So once they see that you've got a Pakistani visa in your passport, they're not going to let you enter. And I was like, okay, because people have experienced similar situations in the past. But when I went in, they had no issue. They were like, yeah, fine. Well, you, you've seen the newsreel footage of the border cross between Pakistan yeah, and India. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a bit of pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Honest. So, where are you from, Lancaster? Or? No, no, no. I'm, I'm originally German, as I said. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I live in Kendall now. Oh, we came Kendall about two months back with the exact same resources for the same exhibition. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where was it? Um, Pump Lane. Lane. Youth Center. It was a youth center. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, we probably wouldn't see it if we don't drive back that way. Uh, it was... I missed you that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only reason I'll tell you. Well, the reason we came in was we saw the sign outside. We started the traffic. We thought, well, we'll have a look. We'll introduce them. What guy did you hear? We were in post hoc rationalization. Swing a post hoc rationalization. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's an important concept. If something happens, uh, you say it happened because of. Oh, no, I see, right, right. right. Okay. And you can explain anything. So watch out for it. We were in Swing Pump Lane. Swing Pump Lane, Whitehaven Harbour Youth Project. So this is this building we were at. Right. Well, I missed you that time, but I caught you this time. Yeah, yeah. So how, how have you found the event? And oh, it's been really interesting. Um, I mean, I, I knew a little bit about Islam because I've, I've had quite a few Islamic students. Um, what do you uh, do? Something don't mind me called computational linguistics. It's a mathematical analysis of text. In university? Yeah, uh, oh. Newcastle. And um, several of them came and wanted to study the Quran. And one of them, and the reason I asked you about how many words are there, she actually um, transcribed the Quran into alphabetic script. Because there's this problem with the Quran. You don't put vowels in. 
classical Arabic. The, the Arab, are you talking about she transcribed the Arabic alphabet into... She transcribed the Arabic words... Yeah, so these Arabic words. ...into alphabetic script using conventions. There are conventions. So she separa separated each letter, basically, right? right? So whenever there was... I, I can't read the script. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what you take to be a word, yeah. you supply the vowel, right? Because you know what it means. But it's not actually represented in the text. So what she had to do is go through a whole Quran, turning it into Western alphabetic script so the computer could read it. Because in many, many cases, she told me, um, you have a given sequence of consonants, and it could be several words. And an Arabic speaker knows what word is meant by the context. Yes. Yeah. yeah? OK. So she did that first, and then she used a variety of mathematical techniques plus for analysis to try to see if there was any way of, of understanding groups of surahs in terms of the thematic content. And she found some real interesting patterns. Uh, one of them being that you, the, the main di differentiation in the surahs is that there are a big group of them to do with morality and daily life, and another group to do with the spiritual doctrine. Okay? And they were written at different times. And the, the analysis showed that, but also showed various other subcategorizations within, within those groups. Interesting. So anyway, she, she published this and it got So uh, what is it called? Stuff. What is it called? Is it published, right? I think it's published, yeah. What is it called? How can I get access to this? Oh, uh, well, if you, can, if you have a pen, nobody has a pen. Yeah, no, I've got a phone. You can tell me, I'll write down a number or a name oh, or what? I'll give you my email and you can email me and I'll send you a copy. Yeah, yeah. What's your email address? Uh, it's okay. H E R H E R M A N N M A N two, two N's two N's. What is there? Dot dot M O I S L M O I S L L forty nine forty nine at gmail dot com. So if you write to me, I, I think I still have a copy of the thesis and also the article that she. Wow. So what the thesis, obviously she did on this, but what was the, because obviously you normally do a program of study, what was the subject? Uh, computational linguistics. Wow, all right. There's, there's so what are you teaching? There's a world in industry on abstracting information from large amounts of text. Um, and that's what I did. And, uh, that's fascinating, thought, isn't it? She thought you could do this with the Quran. How long did it take her? Years. A, a I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, well, just email me. You know. As I say, I, I'm not sure if I still have the article, but definitely have the thesis. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Herman. It was uh, a pleasure and honor knowing you, and now yeah. I can learn more through you. Well, <laughs> well I mean, you. You make great play, I mean you, the Islamic community, make great play of being scientific. And so you invented the Arabic numeral system. Uh, you have very, very many important people in mathematical areas like Al Khwarizmi. Yeah, yeah. Al Khwarizmi yeah. in the back here. Yeah. Um, so I reckon that um, when it comes to studying the Quran, since you're, you want to stay up to date, why not use what's available? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I got to Okay, okay, I'm going to take care. Take care. Take care. Okay, bye.